As someone who's beaten Gotham Knights twice, as well as gotten the Platinum Trophy, I do feel qualified to give my official review on the game at hand. Now, I will say the reason I'm putting out this video a little bit later is just because I wanted to get my thoughts together and let it marinate for a little while. Sometimes when I play a game right away, I don't really have an honest opinion on it until I kind of stop playing it for a while and I understand what I miss about the game and what I did not like anymore. Now, even before the release, there was many people that were split on this game. It was one of those games where a lot of people either very much were looking forward to it or very much hated it. And honestly, I think that's still the case today. There was definitely some underwhelming parts and other parts that they executed properly in my opinion. Some of the common problems people have with the game is just the fact that it had 30 frame rates, which when we're talking about these next generation of consoles, the PlayStation 5 is what I played on. 30 frame rates just doesn't really cut it anymore. Underwhelming combat, among other things, but there's still some good parts that shine through, and I'm going to talk about them both here, the good and the bad. So if you are new here, make sure to go ahead and subscribe if you enjoy content like this, and let's go ahead and get right into the video. So I will be talking about the bad qualities of the game before I get into the good parts, starting with the 30 frame rates that I did mention earlier. Now, personally, it didn't ruin my actual experience or my game, but it's just something that honestly should not be happening, especially when I'm playing on PlayStation 5. A game like this and of this caliber should not be coming out at 30 frame rate. So that was a little upsetting. And I know a lot of people had issues with that. Like I said, it didn't ruin my game, but I definitely see why a lot of people complain about it. Now, the campaign portion of the game, it wasn't horrible, but it was fairly brief. And it was pretty straightforward, which is easy to follow, but it also makes it very easy to predict. And personally, I just don't think they did a good job in the parts they tried to hide. They did try to have some masked villains in the game, but it was so obvious who it was that it ended up being highly anticlimactic once we actually learned in the game because we already knew it before we ever got there. Now, the RPG armor and crafting portion of the game were cool, and I didn't necessarily have a problem with the grind. I never felt like I had to go way out of my way to get armor pieces to be able to keep doing the story, but I did say that I could just never get the right armor for my enemies as each enemy had weaknesses and strengths and it really just killed the flow of the game trying to switch my armor every time I wanted to do a side mission and personally this really only matters I would say on harder difficulties if you're someone that played on lower difficulties you probably never noticed it as you didn't really have to switch your armor I know for myself I did new game plus on an easier difficulty as I was trophy hunting and like I said I never really had to switch my armor but if you're playing this on the hardest difficulty and having to switch your armor every single second it gets kind of annoying you really want to get armor that you can craft and stick with for a while as you play the game not having to switch every two seconds now the combat for me is one of the hardest parts to rate in this entire game as my time with robin was a lot of fun i thought robin was really good it was very smooth but as soon as I switched to other characters, I honestly lost most of the enjoyment of the combat system. It was very simplistic, but at the same time, it left a lot to be desired. It was really easy to learn, but as you get later into the game, there just really wasn't a lot to it. Early on, it was fun and exciting, but towards the end of the playthrough, honestly, I just wanted to be done with it at that point, as the combat just really wasn't doing it for me at that time. Now, I can at least give them some credit for the combat, as I will say, all four characters were unique. My problem is three out of four I just didn't enjoy, but they all were very, very unique. So if you didn't like using guns, the other three didn't have guns. If you liked being acrobatic, you know, you could be acrobatic, but obviously everyone has different points of view on which characters they actually enjoyed. Now, another problem I personally have with the game, and I think a lot of games deal with this problem, to be honest, which is the end game content. It ran pretty dry once you reached the final mission. There was really no urge to do anything else unless you're a trophy hunter. For myself, being a trophy hunter, it at least gave me something else to do with New Game Plus. But for the most part, there really wasn't a lot to do. And especially with them releasing Heroic Assault like a month later or whatever it was, it was supposed to be the answer, but that really just was not great. As I loaded into that, it was just not great enjoyment at all. I kept joining half done missions with one other player in a game mode that was supposed to be four players. 
and I kept one shotting enemies because since I was at the end game, I went into these early missions and it made me do these weak missions for no reason that I personally got no enjoyment out of because I was so much further in the game than what was brought out, which is really weird when they put it out a month later, you would, sh you should be expecting people to already be far into the game. So they should have had a better system for that. In my personal opinion, uh, I was very overscaled, over leveled, and it just really took out a lot of the enjoyment for me. Now, with all that being said, there was a lot of bad, but there also was still a lot of good things that this game created as well. The character dialogue, in my personal opinion, was great at times, and they had some really funny quips. It did make me chuckle. It was very entertaining. If you completed the same mission with four different characters, you got different responses for each as well, which I thought was a very important part of this game as you know i think a lot of people would have been mad if i got the same response from each enemy with the same or different characters as each of them have different relationships with these villains and i thought they did bring that part out a lot i really did like the entertainment value that they did in some of the missions the one that comes to mind for me is the harley quinn prison mission when you're chasing after i believe it's a unicorn through the jail cells and there's some music playing that part was awesome to me like when i played that the first time i thought well, this is amazing and it just gave me such a rush at the time now although it was something that i personally didn't do too much of i thought playing co-op was really a breath of fresh air in this game in the open world of Gotham, running around with a partner, being untethered, not having to stick right next to each other was really enjoyable and it did bring a unique experience to gameplay. And also they did a good job of increasing the difficulty. The only problems I have with the way they did it is the matchmaking part of it and also not being able to close your lobbies if that makes sense because i know for myself sometimes i was either trophy hunting or i wanted to do something solo and some random person would join my lobby sometimes it's kind of fun kind of cool but other times it's one of those things where i should have been able to close my lobby uh maybe i could have and i honestly just didn't know i don't believe i could find anything on it so i think that was one of the only problems is i think if they had a better matchmaking system for it it would have been really good but it was very fun the times i did play with people and i was ready to play with people now the open world was also very impressive and was by far the most fun portion of the game it never really felt forced in my opinion as i was doing some of the side content if i wanted to go do a story mission i could go do a story mission and i didn't have to touch the side content but if I wanted to go fight crime, do some of the other side content like the penguin or whatever the case is, I could do it at any time that I wanted. Like I said, it was never forced, but it also brought a way to go ahead and change up the game for yourself as you travel to each mission. The focus on the co-op and open world, it was pretty obvious that that was what they are focusing on in this game. And I do think they did a pretty good job of executing that portion of the game. I do think that they could have executed other parts of the game a little bit better, but with the co-op and the open world, it at least brought some enjoyment into my experience. Now, all in all, I will say I had a fun experience while playing Gotham Knights, but I could also see why there's some people that didn't have that same experience as parts of the game were a mess and left a lot to be desired. I do feel like the Arkham series also overshadowed this game as it was a comparison for pretty much every portion of the game even before it dropped. Even though they said it wasn't the same universe, even though they said it's nothing like it, everything was compared to it. So personally for the $69.99 price tag that I paid for it on the PlayStation 5, I give the game a 6 out of 10. I do think it could easily be bumped up to a 7 or 8 if the price would have been a little bit cheaper for a game that was pretty short story wise and doesn't really have a lot of replayability or end game content. I personally do believe a price of $39 or maybe $49 would have been better and I think it would be a little bit more worth it. Now I do still believe it is worth a playthrough if you do enjoy these types of games. Maybe it's a game that you can purchase on sale when it does um, on sale because it will at some point or if it goes into one of the playstation plus passes where you can get it for free something like that i do think it is worth a playthrough um, as everyone i've personally talked to has enjoyed the game at least a little bit so with that being said make sure to go ahead and drop a like on the video if you did enjoy it subscribe and turn on that post notification bell and as always i will see you guys in the next video